Hi, I'm Dr. Wendy Bohan and I'm an earthquake geologist. I'm doing a series on the New Madrid Seismic Zone. In my last video, I talked about the earthquake sequence that occurred in 1811 and 1812. And during that video, I mentioned something called liquefaction occurring in the landscape. I wanna talk a little bit more about liquefaction and about other things like fissuring and sand blows and how that can tell us more about these earthquakes and about earthquakes that had happened in this area in the past. So first, what is liquefaction? Liquefaction occurs in areas that have soft sand and soil and a high water table. When seismic waves pass through that area, it pushes the water up towards the surface, which pushes all those little grains of sand and dirt apart and causes the surface to lose strength. It's sort of like if you've ever um, stood at the beach in the soft, wet sand and wiggled your feet. You know how you sink down a little bit? In that case, you're call causing um, small-scale liquefaction to happen near you. This was large-scale liquefaction. Like, there was evidence for liquefaction in the landscape over more than 10,000 square kilometers surrounding these earthquakes. And so not just liquefaction, but also something called sand blows. This video from Iris shows how sand boils form. So we're gonna look below the surface. See that sand layer that has a lot of water? When an earthquake happens, the ground settles, which increases the water pressure in that layer. This slurry of water and sand will then get forced up through cracks in the rock, bringing all of that sand and stuff out onto the surface, making what looks like a little sand volcano. So this is actually what they look like. And they're all over the landscape. These sand blows occurred all over the place and you can still actually see them in the landscape today. If you look at this picture, see those areas that are white or pale compared to the surrounding areas? Those are the sand blows. But as more work was done and more people did research on this area, they realized that you can date the sand blows and figure out uh, how old they are by using things like radiocarbon dating and archeological finds in the area. What they found is that a lot of these sand blows aren't from the earthquakes in 1811 and 1812. They're from older earthquakes. And so by dating these sand blows, they found that there were at least two prior episodes of earthquakes in this region very similar to the earthquakes in 1811 and 1812. So it turns out that those earthquakes are not an anomaly. They're actually sort of normal for this region. And if we look at about how often earthquakes happen over the last 1200 years, it's around every 500 years, give or take a couple hundred years, right? It's not like a bill where a date comes and now the earthquakes do. That's not how the earth works. It's much more complicated than that. But around every 500 years, it appears that a sequence of earthquakes happens in this region. But why? Stay tuned for the next episode.